Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, I'm Jane. My husband Mike is behind the camera. We're British, early retirees, debt and mortgage free and living on a super tight budget here in Brittany in Northwest France. And every Wednesday we open our home, we invite you into the sofa for a midweek money chat. Let's take a look at a very serious topic that we're gonna to talk about today. question out on our YouTube community page and on our Facebook page asking people about their budgeting problems and the biggest problem that people were facing was sticking to a food budget and let's face it food has never been as expensive for, for most of us in our lifetime we've never really experienced this we talk about inflation being between six and ten percent we know we know those of us who go out and buy food from supermarket every week some of the food prices are a hundred percent more than they were before we know that we know that food prices go up and down drastically we know that we're having to cope with a whole load of new problems with prices so Without further ado, we're gonna start by looking at and answering your food budgeting questions. But come back, stay until the end, because I'm gonna give you my five top tips to sticking to your food budget. Nina, that word overwhelmed can really describe all of us at the moment. We are literally dealing with this on a daily basis and it is absolutely overwhelming. So Nina, to, to help you, 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 me and all of us have to deal with, first of all, the budget that we have. We, some of us only have small budgets, but we're all dealing with budgeting. If your budget is small, You've got to start from there. You've got to think of what can we eat within that budget. Now, I will often come up with something that I want to eat, but I'm actually meal planning on the basis of what we can afford to eat. So take a deep breath. We all need to take a deep breath. We all need to step back and go, I can't eat what I always like to eat. But if I'm eating, and, and, here's, and here's an example. If we, as a family, are getting enough calories, if we are getting enough nutrition, if we're getting enough fluids, if we're getting enough that we just slight amount of variety that we're not completely bored to tears, I think we're doing all right. But it's okay to feel overwhelmed. We're all feeling overwhelmed. It's a, it's, it's a big emotion. But step back from that and just think, I'm doing the best I can with the budget that I've got. Thank you for that, Nicola. Yes, I think we can all be a bit concerned about issues of availability. And for some of you watching this, you will have never, ever, ever have seen gaps in the supermarket. You will never have seen supermarkets that clear out things. You may see it if a snowstorm rolls in and people know that there's weather coming and they strip the shelves bare. But then when the weather gets, turns okay again, the supermarket fills up again. So yes, it might, it will worry you and how you feel is how you feel. But there are strategies and ways of dealing with this. And here's an example. There are a shortage of painkillers and your pharmacy or your supermarket or wherever sell this might say you can only have two of this or two of those so buy two of each and then go back a few days later buy two more or go to another pharmacy or another supermarket that sells that on that day so you might be able to build up two or three of those just to help you feel secure about that we know for example there was a shortage of things like oil mustard pasta and rice for example so 
if they are limiting that each time you go and it says you can buy two, buy two and put them away. There are ways of dealing with this. So on that day, like I said, that food shortage item that you see, you know, you might say, well, I can only have one and I'll go to another supermarket and get one or go back later in the day and if you're at work, for example. And this is something that people are seeing. They are seeing shortages at the end of the day. Most of the time, supermarkets have their deliveries overnight or first thing in the morning and the stocks are better in the morning. And you may be only able to go to the supermarket after work time and you may be seeing that. So could you order your shopping online? Can you do click and collect? Can you pick up your shopping first thing in the morning at the Saturday and Sunday? I know it might be a drag setting your alarm and getting there as soon as the store opens in the morning. So there are ways and means of coping with these shortages, but there is a coping strategy that I'd like all of us to, to take with us. It's if you take the broad picture of the supermarket, is there meat? Are there vegetables? Is there fruit? I know there's going to be gaps. Are there tins? Is there dairy? There may well be gaps. But you're not walking in and seeing a completely empty supermarket. Soothe yourself with that. Calm yourself with that. And, and, and hopefully some of those strategies might help you. And, but none of them are diminishing the fact that if you feel worried, that's how you feel. Claire how that would blow anybody's budget. I love to have guests around to the house, I really do. I love to cook, I love to feed people and I have quite a simple budget stretching repertoire. I might put on a beef bourguignon but I'll put on a ton of roast potatoes. I'll do a big dish of something cheap and cheerful like cauliflower cheese to go with that, a big dishes of steamed vegetable. I might put on a big budget stretching dessert, like a big apple crumble. I think you might call it an apple crisp and a big tub of quite reasonably priced vanilla ice cream to go with that. But another way to do that is go veggie, a big tray of vegetable lasagna. Then think of buying those big long baguettes make yourself some garlic butter don't need to be butter get away with vegetable spread stir in with that a bit of dried parsley and some garlic powder cut it up make your own garlic bread wrap it up in foil it quite really is a cheap way to do that homemade coleslaw shredded white cabbage grated carrot finely finely sliced onion Simply stir that up with some cheap and cheerful supermarket own brand mayonnaise. It's good. Great big pile of that. It's very cheap to make. Rice salad. A bag of mixed cooked vegetables. Cook that. Cook the rice. Stir that together. Whack through a bit of vinaigrette with that maybe. Serve that. A pasta salad. Really cheap and cheerful thing to do again, isn't it? Cook some pa pasta spirals chop up some onion, pepper, and some tomatoes. Stir that through, bit of vinaigrette with that. Vinaigrette is really simple. Some oil, some vinegar, some salt and pepper, and a spoonful of mustard. Shake that up in a jam jar. That's a dressing that's easy to go. But there are some ideas. Go veggie, a big vegetable chili and rice, a big veggie chili and uh, curry and rice. So go veggie and think of those staples. You know, think of that, those big hearty meals, those casseroles, a tuna pasta bake. Do you know what I like about going to people's houses? It's one, they feed me, I don't have to do the washing up and I didn't cook it. And I'm enjoying those people's company. So plan a very simple repertoire and go veggie or a big stretch, big, big tray of roast crispy potatoes. Mm. Cheap and cheerful, stretch out those meals. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Thank
Thank you, Amy. You asked very similar questions and I combined these. Yes, that is difficult. We really all as a family need to meal plan as a family. We need to plan for the family that we've got. If you've got an egg, chips and beans eating family, you need to pretty much stick to those type of very simple basic meals because you cannot waste food. So you need to plan as a family. You need to have the discussion. If you've got older children and things are changing, you might need to bring in those changes gradually. There may be things that you might need to ration gradually and buy less of gradually. You might need to start doing things. Now, if you have got a family who just keep grabbing the bread out the bread bin and keep making themselves sandwiches all day, you might need to put half the bread in the freezer and only need half of it. If they're gonna eat it, they're gonna keep making themselves toast and jam or toast and peanut butter. They're gonna, you need to quite, you need to break that down. And I'm also going to say something now about bulking out meals. I think we need to start thinking about a bigger breakfast and a bigger lunch and a bigger pack lunch and bigger sandwiches and those things that are cheap and filling to take to school and those evening meals. It might need to be that we need to bring the evening meal as early as we can possibly make it. Now I know that's not possible for everybody because if you've got a long commute home but having something like a stew or a casserole, a chilli or something simple and easy in your slow cooker, in your crock pot so it's ready when you come in. So you've got something that you've cooked the night before that you reheat the next day just so people aren't eating the snacky stuff. If your family's younger, it's a bit easier. You can sneak those cheaper things in. They aren't really going to notice but plan for the family you've got, not the family you think you've got, the actual plan that you've got. Have the conversation with people and the whole family that, look, this is the only amount of money we've got for food. We have to make this last. And if you've got snacks or treats or cookies or cakes or biscuits or any of those things, you might have to hide them and get them out and say, you can have two cookies a day, you can have one apple a day between you, you can have a third of a banana between you and that's that. You can have one yogurt a day because once they're gone, they're gone. I will not be going back to the shop for any more. There isn't any more. So you're gonna have to be quite, you're gonna have to conduct this orchestra. You as the family, you as the parents, you as the whoever is looking after everybody, you as the grandmother who's running the budget, the grand, whoever you are, the adult who's running this budget, you're going to have to have this chat with everybody. You can't have snacks and chips and crisps and cookies and biscuits and all of these things. We don't have the money for that. And if we do have the money for that, you can't have them all day, every day. You can have some every other day, or you can have some at the weekend, or you can have some in the evening after your main meal. But you need to think about stretching out that, planning as a family, measuring it out as a family, deciding who's going to eat what and when. And the picky bit's quite different and difficult, isn't it? Because like I said, you need to plan for the family you've got. And your family might have food issues to consider and you, you have to plan that in. You might have to plan in the budget issues you've got, but you do need to get everybody on board. They are going to moan, they are going to whine, they are going to say, Bert down the road gets cookies every day, I don't get them, and I bet you Bert doesn't. They are going to say, oh people else, they can have what they like and we don't. Probably not true. They are going to say it's not fair and moan. It's hard luck, isn't it? You're just going to have to keep being the, 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 the adult of the family who's just going to have to say, well, that's the way it is, my love. We have to just keep going with this. Um, you don't apologise. You don't have to apologise. You, mum, dad, that's the budget that you've got. You're doing the best that you can with it. You get everyone on board as best you can. But they're picky. I'm going to go without till the next time there's any spare cookies, aren't they? Because there is what there is, 
and all you can do is your best. Thank you so much for that, Catherine. I know, I know from the Facebook page that you're, you're younger. I know you've got a young family. I know that you are learning. And I have great confidence in you, Catherine, that you're gonna get better at this with practice. I, I, I really want to ex explain to you that I wasn't born good at budgeting. I wasn't born good at cooking. Uh, I had a mum who cooked at home, who didn't have a lot of money. And what I had growing up was, I loved my mum's cooking. But my mum was no chef, no gourmet cook, and I am certainly, I'm no great cook, I'm a home cook. I don't cook fancy food. And there are days, Catherine, when I just make homemade chips and a fried egg, and I open a tin of baked beans. It is absolutely okay, Catherine, to have a meal plan that says, tin soup and a bread roll with cheese in it. That's a meal. It's okay, Catherine, to have a very basic repertoire of meals that you can cook. And if you want to learn to cook something or you've had a disaster with cooking things and it's not, you think my rice turns out mushy, because I used to do that, my rice used to be mushy, I always got it wrong. So if you get things wrong, if you just think my mashed potatoes don't taste very good, in the search bar of YouTube, ask a question. How to make mashed potatoes? How to cook rice? How to make a casserole? How to make a stew? And those questions will be asked, answered for you. And there are people out there with huge hearts who are really willing to teach cooking and any other domestic, household, gardening, fixing things skills. There are dads and men out there, for example, who know boys are growing up without an adult male in the household who show things like how to shave. So if you feel overwhelmed and you don't know how to do something, it's okay to go to places like YouTube and put in those very, very basic questions. But please, Catherine, realise none of us were born able to budget or born able to cook or do any of those things. We had a little bit of skill. I, who, I'll put this out there. Who remembers the first time you made a spaghetti bolognese or the first time you made a chilli or the first time that you made something and thought, oh, not as good. Next time you made it, it got a bit better. And the next time you made it, it got a little bit better. And it's going to be like that for you, Catherine. Keep, keep at it, keep trying, and the more you persevere, you will get better at it. Thank you so much for this one. Across the world, there are many cultures and many people for whom snacks are as big as calorie intake and food intake as meals. That's part of your culture and that's what you do. You might need to look into the budget and your meal planning into this. You plan your three meals a day and your snacks. You might have to look at what you eat and think to yourself, should I be eating this many snacks? Can I eat less snacks? Can I ration the amount of snacks that I have? Am I eating enough in my meal times to carry me through until my next meal so I'm not hungry? There are some cultures and very much here in France, for example, it isn't a snacking culture. They don't eat in between meals. They eat at meal times, and they go on until the next time. So, take a look at your meal plan. Take a look at your budget and ask, am I eating enough in meal times? If you are, and you're so hungry in between meals that you need to eat snacks, 
Do you need to plan that in? Do you need to plan that into your budget? Is your budget realistic? However, if your budget is only so big and you're spending money that's maybe making you overdrawn or go into debt or take away from your savings, then you might need to ask the question and only then you might need to ask the question, should I be eating these snacks? And should I be planning more so I don't get hungry and plan more and proper meals throughout the day? Wow, yeah, it can be tricky, can't it? Packing up the lunches every single day. I've always had jobs where I've had so little time to eat lunch, I really couldn't care. I just got food down myself and back out to work again. But I can understand that food is important and, and you say that you're making these lunches and you're providing these lunches and you, you want to do your best. So let's just think about that, you know, can you take a food flask in with some, maybe some cooked pasta or some warm leftovers? Is there anywhere that you can reheat things? Is there a staff room? Is there access to a microwave? Is it just sandwiches? Could you change that up? Change your bread. That's an interesting thing about bread. Change the bread. Can you do white bread, brown bread, wholemeal? Can you put it in, in, a, in a round bap, in a bread roll, in a French stick? Can you send people in with different fillings? Can you send people in with a pie, with a pasty, with an alternative? Snacky things can get really, really, really expensive. If the main item is enough, they're probably not going to eat or need the snacky things. If they've got a very, very long day and they want some fruit in there or some snacks like sausage rolls or a piece of quiche, or a piece of cake, you then need to look at the maths. Is it cheaper for you to buy these things? Is it cheaper for you to make these things? That's a time factor. I used to spend Saturday morning when my kids were young, batch cooking. So I made things like cake, jam tarts, flapjacks, and I used to have a cycle of things that I would make I couldn't keep making the same things, they would get bored of them, they would leave them, but I would also see the things that they left and didn't eat, I didn't make again for ages. Was I giving them too much of one thing, they didn't eat it? So, or did I make them enough of it? I usually say to my kids with more than they needed, but you know, we don't have the budgets for those things anymore. So just as I said earlier with meal planning and when it comes to packed lunches, make packed lunches for the family you've got and the things that they eat. Make maybe a little bit of a list that you can rotate those things. I hope that helps. I love the sharing community. Leave a comment, would you? What do you put in your family's packed lunches to keep things interesting? And what do they like to have in their packed lunches? The first point, and it is so very important, we must do a stock check and we must get some kind of an inventory. You just need a notepad to write this down in. You need to know what is in your fridge, your freezer. You need to know what is in your pantry, what is in the basket. Where do you keep potatoes? Where do you keep the carrots? Where do you keep the fruit? You need to know this. And before you even think about anything else, you need to think about what have we got that we can use first. It is absolutely essential, and especially if you have never done this before, that you are meal planning. That meal plan means for what are we eating for breakfast? What are we eating for lunch? What are we eating for our main meals? And if you are a family who cannot live without snacks, what are we gonna have for a snack? 
What fruit do we need? What yogurt do we need? Do we eat? Are, are we people who eat desserts? We need to plan for and budget for absolutely everything. So we are not just thinking about what we're having for dinner, that we are thinking about the plan for absolutely everything we're going to eat. When you know everything that you've got in your house and you've created a meal plan with that first, and you've created a meal plan with that of fresh goods first, you then may think, now and only now do I write my shopping list. Because you are never again going to go to the store without a shopping list. And that shopping list is going to be explicitly for the things that are on that plan. And you're never again going to go into the store and shop for anything that isn't on that shopping list. And when you're in that store, you are going to shop with that shopping list and a calculator. I cannot, I cannot stress. Even now, all of these years later, I never shop without a list and I only buy what is on the list and I go around totting things up on my calculator as I go around and I still do that now. There's certain things about behaviours that we need to change if we are going to stick to a food budget, especially if it is a tight budget, especially if you are struggling. And it is to do this. You shop for the meals first. And if you have got to the end of your food budget and you haven't been able to buy any snacks, you need to feel comforted that those three meals a day are covered. So there you go. You might think to yourself, well, this is a bit time consuming, but please, it will save you the stress and the worry because you'll know I've got to the end of my food budget, but those three meals a day, and don't forget I've said you need to budget for the family you've got and plan for the family you've got, and you've bought those first. And then, and only then, can you say, well, we've got a little bit of budget left. Now I can put in the yogurts. Now I can put in the cookies and the crisps and anything else, the peanuts and things that people might want for snacks. You know, you buy your meals first and then and only then it's the snacks. My final point really only applies to if your budget allows. And it's something that I have done all this year. I have changed my behavior to do this. And that I have a monthly food budget and I have turned 10% of that into food long-term savings. So I now have a 300 a month budget, which I know is a very good budget for two people. We take 30 of that a month and I am putting that into long-term food storage. So I'm putting that predominantly into things like tinned fish, tinned meat, coffee, sugar, pasta, rice, oil, condiments, ketchup, mayonnaise, dried fruit, tinned fruit, tinned vegetables, things that I can put away, dried potatoes, tinned potatoes, that if there is a sudden surge in prices, and every now and then there is, and every now and then if there are any shortages, I have got that little bit of buffer to put that away. Thank you so much to everyone for watching. Thank you to everyone who hits the like button. Thank you so very much to everyone who leaves a comment and we read every single one of them. We'll see you again soon. Bye.